Hey, fish heads, Jen Crevasse, Jekyll Bates, and this is another spray session. Today, we're gonna do a winter shad. This is gonna be uh, dying off. It's a late fall, early winter type pattern, goes right through the, uh, the pre-spawn. You can pretty much work this year round. This is just one of my favorite patterns when the shad are dying off for the season to throw. So we're gonna do this on a number of baits. I'm gonna show you one and or more. Um, Let's paint something cool. So as you can see, I've already got this set up. This is just a lipless blank that I had in stock in the uh, in the office and I have taken a random stencil and set it up to where I can put a little bit of black on the top. This is a Liquitex Silver and just real quick I'm going to go over the color scheme on how we're going to lay this down. I've got some Liquitex Silver that you've already got on the bait, some gold, some detail moss green from Wicked, a little bit of opaque sky blue. Iridescent purple has become one of my favorite purples to use. It's got a lot of flash in it, a lot of, a lot of color shift, some detail raw umber, and some sepia. So those are the basic colors I might throw in a little bit. I don't want to overdo it, and I really only want to concentrate on the color in the top portion of the bait where the black is now. That is a wicked jet black. There's, there's nothing fancy about it. It's just a standard wicked color. Um, not much going on there except for when you do metallics, and I know that I've said this in other videos, golds and silvers, the lighter metallics, really, really show off better against a black background than they do gold. So if you want a more muted tone for a metallic, hit it against silver or white. If you want it to kind of stand out and be another base for different colors on top of that, go with a black background. So first color against this black is gonna be this Liquitex Gold. And I'm just gonna go along the spine of the bait I'm going to go beyond the stencil because we can add that into the background, but I don't want to go too far down. I would not go any further than this medial line right now. Here. I mentioned just a few moments ago that I'm doing this. I'm recreating this pattern on several different baits, not just this lipless. And as I'm looking in the monitor on this particular video, I'm deciding that it might be easier to show you guys this pattern on a contender, on something that's got a little bit more real estate in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and transfer our spray session over to this, just so you can see how I do it. I'm still gonna be doing this on these other guys too, uh, but just for the purposes of this video so you guys can see this a little bit better, I think this might be our go-to bait for today. Now, before I clean this cup out, I'm adding iridescent purple directly into this gold. It's going to tone down the, the loudness of the iridescence just a bit and the, the shade of the purple, but it's going to keep that metallic property to it, which it kind of already has. Um, so I really like doing that when I'm blending colors. I've grabbed the stencil that I'm going to be using on this particular pattern, and I'm going to work from the back to the front so I'm not swiping over the color as I go. And I've got that iridescent purple into the gold. We just wanna make sure that we lay this down. We're only gonna do just a little bit right around the, uh, the contrast line here that I've created with that stencil. Just a very light shape. Just kind of follow that contrast line if you can. Just work up and down into that and then flip the bait over and do the same thing. And when you flip it over, don't forget to turn your stencil around because you always want the scales pointing towards the tail. 
So on this, we're gonna go right and back. That's just the direction that I'm working in. And then on the tailpiece. And there we have it, maybe just a little bit more here. Just a little more. On now that that we've edge. got that on, I'm gonna add just a little bit at the forehead here just right above and into the eye socket and then just a little bit on the back and nose and then we're done with that color for the lateral line that you see on this picture in the corner I'm going to be adding just a little bit of detail black magenta uh, it's a little bit lighter in the picture uh, but it's actually what I used to represent some of the scaling in the top of the bait. So I'm just gonna carefully make sure we're not shooting and clogging. Gonna come all the way down and then just follow that lateral line to the gill plate. And that's what we've got. I'll do the same thing on the other side. Always do both sides at the same time. While I have this detail black magenta, I'm just gonna go along the top of the spine, and darken that up a little bit. And we're gonna come across with black towards the end of this pattern, but right now, I'm just gonna add in a little bit of that detail black magenta, go all the way down to the nose. Now that we're pretty much finished with our purples, there's a hint of blue in this. There's a hint in the, in the belly of ear and in the back. So I'm gonna do some opaque sky blue here, just right around the gill plates and fade that back. And then also underneath this lateral line towards the tail. We're also gonna add some metallics, but for now I just wanna kind of fade that back just so we have a base right there. Now, it is opaque, but it's also against a really flashy metallic silver, so we can get away with just a little bit. Just like that. I'm going to come back in with just a little bit of jet black. Just a little bit here, and then I've got just a piece of a stencil. I'm going to add a tiny line to the gill plate, make sure I'm spraying properly, and then just follow along the edge of the stencil. And then just a little bit under the eye. And we're gonna cover that with gold in a little bit, but I just wanna make sure that that's there. And then when you do the other side, just flip it. underside of the eye, there we go. And you'll also notice that it kind of has like almost a bruised or dirty look towards the tail of this and that the lateral line is much, much darker towards the tail. So let's go ahead and lay that in and just kind of fade it forward. Do the same on the other side. Just fade that in forward get that a little bit darker. Since we already have the black in the cup, there's a little bit of modeling towards the bottom of this gill plate. I'm just gonna use this random metal stencil. This is from Amazon, it's Stains and Blurs, and I can leave you the link in the description below. Hopefully it's not blowing the camera out because it's copper. It's a copper plated stencil, it's metal instead of plastic, but it's got some real tiny modeling that I like. I just wanna lay that in super light. Absolutely don't want that dark because it's going to be covered with gold and other colors. So we're pretty much going to work from uh, 
transparent colors from here on out. I don't want this to fall over, so I'm kind of propping this up. And then just a real light, so what that looks like. A little bit closer up, hopefully we can stay in focus for the camera here. But that's what we've got going on. Nice and light there. Another thing that I want to do right now, since I've got the black out, is I'm going to go ahead and line the spine of this, just like you see in the picture. It is almost entirely black. I'm not going to use a stencil for that, only because it's not really necessary. You're just going to shoot away from the bait and just barely hit the top. Come over at once. There's that black spine. And at the same time, we're gonna go ahead and put in the kill dot. I call it the kill dot, shad dot. And we're gonna line it up right on this lateral line here, right behind the eye. I wanna make sure that this bait does not fall over because it's leaning precariously. Last thing I'm going to do with black here is I'm going to come back with the stencil that we use the iridescent purple on. I'm just going to lay in just a little bit, keep that kind of bruised look on this bait. Just real light. While I have my scaling out, I've cleaned the cup out. Get that off to the side. I've got silver. And this doesn't work so much on bull shads because he uses scaling in his bait. Um, so it's more difficult to get some precise scaling down. It can be done but it can be a bit of a bear to get any kind of stenciling or wrap tight enough on a bull shad, at least the stuff that's got scales. The glides are much easier. But what I'm gonna do, hopefully this will translate in the camera, hopefully everything is still pretty good as far as being in frame for you guys, but I'm gonna come over very lightly and we're gonna lay in just a little silver scaling. Yeah, that five times fast, silver scaling. Because you really want that to look like as natural as possible. Just kind of fade that back. And that's, uh, that's looking pretty cool. Pretty juicy. And I'm also gonna do a little bit against this lateral line. Just a hint. Running that back. And again on the other side. And make sure you're flipping your stenciling each time you do that. And a little bit on the belly just to kind of give it that contrast. So what you're seeing, if we can get this close enough, that's what you're seeing. Now I brought these guys out because just so you know, I'm playing along with a lot of other baits here too. I'm showing you guys on the larger bait on this contender from Guggen Squad. Uh, but you can put the same pattern on any bait you want. So just to kind of give you how these guys are doing. It's looking pretty good. It's You want it to look as natural as possible, especially with shad. So everything that you can do to kind of mimic the scaling and they look a bunch of different ways as they're moving through the water because of all the pearlescence. And uh, the cool thing about metallics is if you have that darker background, because of all the mica in metallics, 
you can achieve some of the same effects. The next two colors I'm going to be using are a Liquitex Gold and a Raw Umber from Wicked. We're going to do the gold first because if you notice on the picture, the gold pretty much covers up this black in the eye. You can still see it, but the gold is more prominent. And then as you move back into the bait, you're going to see little flecks of gold throughout. So we're going to do that just here and there. And then there's a, a place where you can see very prominently um, some, some darker reflection in the scaling. And that we're going to represent with the the raw umber. Now this raw umber is a good bit darker than the gold, but we don't want to overdo it. So we're just going to come come in here underneath our kill dot. Just add a little bit in there. And that is it. Maybe just a bit in the nose. But you really, really want to go light with that. Just a nice little bit of bruising there. You can hardly tell what this stuff is, but it's Comart. Um, it's from Iwata. And this is, it's going to add a little bit of a pearl to it. It's very, very thin. It's a translucent, but it's just going to bring out a little bit more shine throughout the bait. You can get it at Blick Art. I can also give you a link in the description below. I did say I was going to use some moss green, and I am, but not much. I'm going to shoot it from the back, just across the spine on the belly, and then just a hint on the nose. There is just the tiniest hint of a blood bruise towards the tail on the picture. So I'm going to use a little bit of maroon. It's got a little bit of silver metallic in it. And just, just barely, I mean barely, put that in. Before we put the eyes on, the very last thing is going to be some electric blue and intense violet just across the spine. Not a whole lot going on there, but because it's a thread fin and not a gizzard, I kind of want to finish it off the way, there we go, the way it looks in its picture, which is a real picture. And that is courtesy of Ackworth Shad Shack. So thank you guys over at the Shad Shack for providing this awesome live shad thread fin. That, except for the eyes and getting clear coat on that, is what we've got for you guys today. I'm going to show you the final reveal, probably in a workshop update. Let's put some eyes on this and I'll show you what we've got so far. And just so you know, it's Friday and the desk is a hot ass mess. Sorry about that, guys. Isn't that cute? Joe gave me that. It's kind of like trying to be a badass, but underneath it's still Annie. Still Anakin. So, okay, I do have... Why is that not focusing? Sorry about the focus issues. It's Friday. Everybody has a hard time focusing on Friday. So I do have the original proof that it's a Guggen Squad contender, and I will happily include these eyes with this contender when I sell it. Um, but... Because it's a shad, I really want to get some more natural eyes. So I think, there they are. I think I'm going to use these. This is with the eyes in. And yeah, I've got some wicked glare. It's afternoon. And even though I've got really dark walls, that uh, here we go, Steelers. Um, even though I've got real dark walls, I get lots of glare from the afternoon sun, so shadows and stuff's bouncing really bad. So this looks a little bit darker than it is in real life. But we, again, will show you that reveal in an upcoming workshop update, probably Monday. 
probably Monday because I've got family stuff I'm going to do this weekend and a lot of video editing for the you guys, including this one. So that, folks, is all the news that's fit to print. This is how the rest of these guys came out. Very similar to what the contender looks like. But what I normally do when I'm doing a bunch, uh, a single run on one pattern, is I'll film one. And I was going to start out filming this. Um, but I just wanted to give you guys a little bit better of an image. And uh, just had a, had a good time with this one. So I hope I've been able to teach you guys some stuff. Um, certainly hope that you uh, can spray along. Some of you guys do, some of you don't. I haven't seen some pictures from you guys in a while, so please. Uh, and again, the shadows are bouncing all over the place and I have no idea why it looks this dark, but it's really not. It's uh, it's actually pretty light on the belly, but we get some pretty wicked shadows and lighting from the afternoon sun, even as dark as my walls are. Um, unfortunately, it just bounces real bad with that afternoon sun coming right in the window. I spy. Nice, there you go. Pete, reckless, keep it reckless. But that is all the news that's fit to print. Thank you so much for playing along. Um, thanks for the view and thank you for your support. I really appreciate it and it goes a long, long way. So cheers, happy casting from Jekyll Bates. <laughs>